Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hi, Dr. Lawrence, and hello, Tracy. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, we're just coming in a little bit early just to say hello to everyone and also welcoming our viewers out there on our second Facebook Live for IARC. Yes, that's wonderful. We're all the way from another side of the world. We call it Asia. Where are you? <laughs> Tracy Jones. I'm in the Midlands in the UK, so we're definitely a bit apart at the moment. <laughs> What time is it over there? Nearly nine o'clock in the morning. So ah, what time is it? That's nice. <laughs> Early. Is it about five o'clock where you are in the evening? Yes, Friday evening. Very relaxed yeah. for us. <laughs> the end of a long week. Hello, yeah. Zati. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We're just welcoming everybody and I'm um, going to start in three minutes. Yeah. For those of you who's joining us, uh, click the share button, select right pose and then uh, share it to your network of friends and followers on Facebook. Okay, share, publish. Hello, Fake Jean. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. So before we start, I'd like you all to be a sharer to our live video so you can share it to more people to watch us and so that they can get some wonderful knowledge uh, and hear some great sharing from our Asia Top Master Trainer, Dr. Dr. Lawrence, and also Tracy all the way from UK. So what you have to do is you just have to click the share button and make sure you're sharing it to public. Yeah, select right post and sharing it to public. And once you have done that, your name should appear as a sharer as you comment. All right, so I'll see you guys. All right, Enjoy. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, Angel Kelly. Thank you. Hello, Xander. Hello, Bonnie. Hello, Dayang Fatima. Thank you so much for joining us. Wow, it's nice to see so many friends coming in. Yes. Let's see anybody from the Viking or the Irish, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's St. Patrick's Day soon, correct? Yeah, I thought it was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. I yeah, I thought yeah. it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Huh. <laughs> We're just waiting. Yeah. Maybe you can tell a little bit about uh, IARC and LWS while waiting. Irene? Yeah, tell us a little bit more about um, IARC, Tracy. Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, it was established in 1999 to as people were moving more to correspondence and distance learning. So we were aiming to help um, other organisations to develop into that area, really. Um, so obviously, we've been going for quite a while now. And um, ACSU, who I also work for, is one of the members, and we, you know, we're aiming to develop distance learning and improving the services we're offering, really. So it's useful to have other members who are also doing distance learning so we can all learn from each other, really. <laughs> so. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. I believe distant learning uh, happened like uh, two, de two decades ago, and but right now it's becoming so popular, right? So yeah, your business definitely. must be doing well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it has yeah. definitely improved over the last few years, definitely. So. Mm. <laughs> But they just changed the name from distant learning to online learning, correct? Um, we, we, in the UK, we still call this ACS distance education, so we're still distant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but actually, it's called online, right? Now, it's called online learning. No, it, would, it depends. I think different countries use different terms. We do do online uh, learning, but we still do distance learning as well. You know, with um, memory sticks and so on, and correspondence. So we, I think distance learning covers it all, doesn't it? Really, it's not just ah, online. I see. I see. Fantastic. Hi, Dr. Okay. Brandon. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Shanice. So I'm going to start right now. It's five o'clock sharp. 
So can I start, Dr. Lawrence and Tracy? Yes, great thing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So welcome everyone again to IRC's second live show. I'm your host and moderator for today, and I'm also the member of the executive board of IRC Australia and the director for Lawrence Water Seminars. So first of all, I am delighted to have Dr. Lawrence and Tracy Jones and all the viewers out there for investing your time today as we share on five strategies to engage online learners and participants. So we have, of course, Dato Dr. Lawrence Walter, just a quick introduction, Asia's top speaker, chief master trainer, founded Lawrence Walter Seminars 35, year 35 years ago and written eight books. And also uh, Lawrence Walter Seminars corporate training has reached to 2 million participants and 14 countries, which includes Guam, China, and also Spain. I'm yes. also delighted. Yes. <laughs> I'm also delighted to have Tracy Jones. Tracy is a distance learning specialist, ACS distance education and regional president for IRC UK and Europe. Tracy has worked for ACS Distance Education for nearly 20 years, focusing wow. on psychology. Yes, wow. <laughs> focusing on psychology, counseling and writing. She was also a mental health and learning disabilities trainer. So a little bit about ACS, as Tracy has mentioned just now, it was founded by John Mason 42 years ago and started as a correspondence school and now with more than 600 online courses. And through ACS partners, uh, they are present worldwide in US, UK, Singapore and New Zealand. So thank you again for all the viewers who is watching. Um, uh, I hope that you stay with us and then uh, we are looking for the most acti uh, uh, active participants. So if you have questions for both of our speakers, put down your comments below and you may run um, to win for the ACS5 ebook bundle list and also Lawrence Water Seminars SOC online community, which is run by Dr. Lawrence monthly. Good. So to, Good. Yeah. So today's uh, um, topic is going to be divided into three separate parts. We're going to talk about pre. So prior to the training and learning, how do we engage with our participants during the training and the learning session and post? So we're going to start with the pre. So Dr. Lawrence, can you share with us how do we get um, participants excited prior to the training programs? I believe that learning knowledge is such a beautiful experience however some made it so boring and some made it so difficult to learn why maybe because they did not know there were several technologies and techniques involved i want to make learning to be a wonderful experience so that when people are learning something they are they are learning like indiana jones it must be related to Tracy Jones. <laughs> you know, they should have the inquisitive mind of Stephen Hopkins or William Shakespeare. People buy their books, watch the movies, and they get so excited, you know, when they see a learning event happening that engages them. Otherwise, they off the video and they fall asleep or they don't what they do don't they don't do anything and that makes learning so boring so today is a very important topic i'm glad all of you are here i really want to make learning to be a beautiful and wonderful experience for everyone around the world so that you continually buy books attend seminars keep on you know improving yourself because that's how you become successful you need knowledge from knowledge you get new energy when you have new energy you get new success in your life so i think this is the right way this is a beautiful topic and i like to start by saying that before you start your class for those uh, professors or lecturers or teachers or trainers out there it's very important that we always forget to ask who is my audience especially on a zoom session right so we should send an a google link or an email and says hey send me some some of your pain some of your challenges uh what are you facing and if people keep sending all this information to you, you can just glance through it and you understand your participants so easily. 
So that's tip number one. But many people don't. They just switch on the online, switch on mm. the Zoom, and then blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry. But we really want to make learning an exciting experience. That's my first point. So you got one point. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, you're right, uh, Dr. Lawrence. I think it's very important as a, as a trainer. I think that's a lot of uh, trainers that are watching right now. Um, we need to always remember to try to be uh, interested in our participants rather than being interesting. I learned that from my academic mentor. And um, yeah, so Tracy, I think... Um, for training, it's slightly different than uh, being a student and as a learner. So tell us, prior to um, learning, what's your tip um, to keep them excited? Well, I don't know if I can top Dr. Lawrence there, but I think really when you come in, as a, I'm a tutor and a writer, but I'm also a student myself, I love studying. And I think it's important to actually think of the reasons why you want to do something. Um, yeah. It might be for promotion, it might be because you want to improve your knowledge, or it might just be because you're interested in it, but you've got to have your reason. And I think you've got to keep remembering that reason why you want to study. And once you've got the reason, then you carry out your research, you find out which is the right course, and it's the course for you. And I think a lot of students forget why they want to do the course. And I always do. I write a note on my fridge. Why am I doing this course? What do I want to achieve from it? I think we have to remember I like that. that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I like that. that idea very much, yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Good. yeah. Yeah, because as, as you start learning, um, you're going to face um, uh, stumbling blocks, right? And then you get demotivated. So it's always um, important to keep it um, in front of your fridge, actually. <laughs> to know, yeah, why, why did we start doing this in the first place, right? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in during... Asia, we don't put it. We don't put it in front of fish. We put it on the television. Why? Because we watch a lot of television. <laughs> <laughs> Probably on your phone right now. We're always glued to our phone, isn't it? Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So during, your... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of our LWS clients out there who express interest to join us, and they run um, weekly online trainings for the team. So Dr. Lawrence, share with us, during the training, how do we keep our participants and uh, learners engaged throughout um, two days or three days of training programs, especially yeah. online? Yeah. Surprisingly, many trainers and online uh, Twitters, they forget, not that they don't know, they forget to use technology. One of the technology was pioneered by Sheila Ostranda. Her name was resonant with the book called Super Learning. In Super Learning, you can learn things faster by engaging the people. Example of a simple idea, but the most important idea we always forget. When you talk to students or learner, which part of the organ are you talking to? their stomach or their kidney and everybody says what no of course it's not the stomach of course it's not the kidney it's the brain but we seldom learn about the brain this is the brain look at that brain yeah right and the brain is divided into two halves and a lot of people are not aware that's the left brain and the right brain and when you are teaching, example, when you're engaging learners, and if you're only talking facts and ideas and slides, you know, that's called the left brain. What about the right brain? The right brain is creative. The, light, the right brain wants to see something visually exciting. He wants to see your hands moving. He wants you to describe what you just said. You know, whether it's chemistry or psychology or animal farming or, psych or any aspect, yeah, or any aspect yeah. of your course. So a lot of, you know, lecturers, they just fold their hands and put their hands nicely, you know, like this and just talk and talk and talk. Please remember to use technology. Our brains are divided into two halves. So when you combine both of side to the brain, we call it synergistic learning. One plus one equals to five, not two. But please don't teach this to your kids. Huh? If they write it, don't blame me. Yeah. So I really encourage people to read this book by Sheila Ostrander. Georgi Lazanov created another book called Accelerated Learning. He's a Bulgarian psychologist and he teaches languages 
in just 36 hours. And what does he use? He uses posters, he uses music, he uses his voice. His voice writes over the rhythm of the classical Baroque music. And people get excited learning. They are engaged because they know, hey, my left and the right brain is excited. That's what we should do. That's idea number two. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Dr. Lawrence, I also noticed that you like to use all these little props and little things that you hold. But what is yeah. it like? What is it for? What is it really for? Oh, well, recently I was in Singapore and I was given an opportunity to talk to uh, Duke and U.S. University. You know, it's an mm -hmm. American university uh, together with Singaporean and all the lecturers are there somewhere double double doctorate not double degree uh, double doctorates and you know they were like saying uh, how can we engage our students on a technical subject so i say it's important to show what you are sharing to demonstrate what you are talking you see the brain is made of a lot of old information this is nlp neuro linguistic programming maybe some of you know about this right john grinder and dr richard blander they discovered that the brain has got a lot of old information and the way to learn is to link the new information to the old information example if this is your old information it's like a hook, hook in your brain so whenever you're teaching you got to learn how to hook it if you don't hook if the hook is not strong what happened they don't they forget so this leads to poor memory but as a presenter you're responsible for your students learning, learning. environment so that's how i feel if you feel responsible to make your learning fun exciting engaging then use the two technologies i shared with you first is called accelerated learning second is called nlp neuro linguistic programming which works by triggers you know when mm -hmm. you see something you remember something stronger why because it was shown in a lecture or something like that i i was in um, uh, spain and when i came to to this beautiful city of valencia uh, I, I saw a lot of people uh, wanting to learn from me and I wanted them to get one point so guess what I did I gave them a fish a fish you know right and everybody had a fish and throughout the whole lesson I was talking about the fish whether you want to be a small fish or a big fish or whether you want to be inside the red ocean or the blue ocean so after three hours of talking to the people that's what guess what this is oh i love your fish <laughs> which means i got it triggered i got them hooked so that's how we use nlp so sometimes we forget well that's mm. my third point yeah wow thank you dr lawrence so you're saying that sharing stories um, um and sharing your your experiences when you're doing training and that kind of relates to what i remember tracy was about to share so tracy yes. uh tell me more like uh, is it important to share stories to learners i think so because when, when a student's buying a course they're not just buying a piece of paper or a computer screen they're also buying access to the tutor and the tutor's yeah. got a lot of knowledge, hopefully, um, yeah. a lot of experience and a lot of things to share. So I think storytelling is important as well. Um, I mean, I have students, because I teach psychology and counselling, I have students who will share things with me that they might not have shared with anybody else. Um, yeah. So it's important to share your stories as well. You, they're sharing stories with you, you're sharing stories with them about your experiences, yeah. your yeah. knowledge helping them to learn and to realise that what they're studying is real. They're not just learning something off a screen yeah. or off a piece yeah. of paper, it's actually reality. Um, right. And I also think it's important, to, they need to realise that I'm a human being and that mm -hmm. I've got things to share and I need to know that they're a human being and that they've got things to share with me. And I think it's really important to share our stories and share our experiences and, and it also helps to motivate them to carry on and do more studying, hopefully, so yeah. that they enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No yeah. wonder your like courses. Like yeah. No wonder yeah, your no courses are so popular. popular. Yeah. 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 Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 You know, it's so like popular. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have five hundred and fifty-eight viewers. That's a new record, right? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> when we yes. did it in Australia, it was about 50. Now we have 10 times more. See how important this topic is? 550. Yeah, yeah. And it's growing. Hi, everybody. Good. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hello, Jay. Thank you for joining and Dr. Brandon as well. As well, Azlin. Hello, Azlin. Our good um, Hi, Jay. LWS. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. yeah. So just now you mentioned um, Tracy um, sharing stories and all. Is it okay? Jade is asking, is it okay to share personal experiences as tutors? I think it is, but you have to maintain confidentiality. I would never tell anybody somebody's name, but I might say a general, you know, Mrs. X had yeah. this experience and I worked with them and so on. I think it's yeah. okay then, but yes, obviously you have to maintain confidentiality. Um, and the same if a student tells you something, something really personal, you have to keep that confidential. You don't go telling everybody in it. You know, it is important to share that really. Um, yeah. And I think in what I teach, psychology counselling, you, you do hear a lot of personal information. So confidentiality is definitely important. So, yes, yeah. Jade, yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I believe Jade uh, made a very important point because when we tell stories, we engage the brain. You know, and the storytelling is factual and it comes with emotion. When you combine both sides of the brain, guess what mm. happened? This student or this learner will remember this professor for the rest of his life. I remember my professor of science. He always talked about how important it is to think like a movie star. When you're studying history, study like Indiana Jones. When you're studying science, study like Albert Einstein. I didn't like English. He says, why do you want to think of yourself? Be like William Shakespeare to study the, the glamour and beauty of English literature. Wow, I got so excited after that. So every time I go into a history lesson, I'm like Indiana Jones looking for clues. <laughs> I like your name, Tracy Jones. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I okay. want to share one more thing. During yes. the during the lesson, I think a lot of presenters should know the art of learning. Art of learning is one of our technology. I've written a book called The Art of Learning. And mm -hmm. it talks about how people learn. People don't learn by just hearing. We we call this input learning. People mm -hmm. learn when they are writing, when they're yeah. thinking when they're discussing. So we call it input versus output learning. And the formula actually is one time in, three times out, which means after you have listened to three your times. lecture, yes, we should give them an opportunity to make notes and show it on the Zoom camera. Oh, this is what I learned, professor. This is what I learned, lecturer, you know? And then people are excited because when they show their, their ideas mm -hmm. online, you know, they get recognized. When a student gets recognized, he feels that I want to come for the next class. What time is it? 9 o'clock? Or oh, I'm going to be there at 8.45. Otherwise, they come at 9.30. Why? I don't want mm. to meet my boring lecturer. <laughs> 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 you know? So technology is important. Strategies is important. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Lawrence. Uh, we have uh, Dr. David and Jason. Thank you so much for joining. And I remember uh, Dr. David, he was a student, an art of learning student with you from 20, 30 years ago. And he yes. still remember your training until now. And admittedly, like there's so many... Um, um, clients that call us back to inquire our corporate trainings because they remembered the training that they went through when they were a student with you. Yes. So I have to say, I'm sure there was something that's right, right there. You know, the input output learning, the repetitive learning. I like that. Yeah. yeah. So Tracy, uh, share with me more. I'm pretty sure when you're in a training environment and in a learning environment is different because when you're in training, you have your trainers and a group of people with you. But when you're in an online learning environment, it, it feels rather lonely sometimes, you know, you're like by yourself. Yeah. I think it's, it's different because in a training environment, teaching what I teach, you can find that you get people who won't say anything. The ones who will sit there in the corner of the room and won't say a word. Whereas online, that doesn't happen because you're always dealing one, well, I am, I'm always dealing one-to-one -one with a person. So you yeah. can develop that real relationship and they will say things or they'll risk something in their learning that they might not have done in a group of 20 people. But they'll, you know, they will share and they will experience things in a different way. 
So I think distance learning really does help those learners who might not be as confident as others, might not want to share personal experiences and so on. So I do think it can really help in that way. And it's a good way to engage the learner as well and to make them enjoy it, hopefully. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. Online learning is the new game. Why? Like you said, some people are so shy to go to class. And yeah. when they walk in, they sit at the back of the class, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So online, I don't need to be at the back of the class. I can just yeah. wear a jacket and my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 But Dr. Lawrence, do you think based on your 35 years of training experience, the tips that you share, is it only relevant to uh, Malaysian participants and Asian contacts? Or do you think it's... It, applies and transcends different cultures as well well uh the technology or the tips i'm sharing are based on wonderful knowledge from europe bulgarian psychologists you know uh from america all right john grinder richard blender uh these people they they created this technology to help people to learn faster what I did was I incorporated the, the technology from US, UK, Europe to Asia. So actually, I'm borrowing from Tracy Jones, you know, <laughs> ancestors and, and her line of wonderful experts over there. And, you know, Australia, I remember Marvin Orker. I was in Sydney and I learned from him. He says that whenever you share something, you must show the big picture. You don't dive mm. into it small little details no people want to see people want to see you know what's going on they want to see the big picture then only you give the small picture you know what i mean <laughs> but a lot of trainers and lecturers what i'm saying to you is i know you know this maybe you forgot it maybe today's lesson will you know re-energize you refresh your mind we got to use technology when we are sharing knowledge right yeah yeah fantastic so you're saying that put it out in a macro perspective first before yes. we dive macro, straight into macro, the details yeah. show them yeah. the big so picture that, yes yeah so that the learners can actually follow through with that fantastic yes. and any el anything else from you tracy like you know how do we um keep our our students and our learners uh, engaged uh, throughout the session because it's really quite a long time. I think when they take a course, it's probably like six months, 12 months with you yes. guys, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the one thing we were talking about earlier about television and phones, I often hear students, they haven't got time to study. And I, I do often say to them, have a look at your week and think how much time you waste watching television, looking at your yes. phone, I don't, having a bath, anything like that. And think, could I actually be studying then? And I do think a lot of people don't realise just how much time they actually waste. And I know I do at times, but have a think about it and try and think, I really want to do this course and I am going to fit it into my life. And just put your phone away, turn your telly off and actually sit down and get started, really. I think that's yeah. the important yeah. thing to do, finding the time. So, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. I agree. You know, okay. this, this subject of online learning is so popular. And you're so lucky, Tracy Jones. You know why? Because we have 827 people watching right now. That's good. Good. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Jade is probably a little bit jealous now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it's because of the name UK and Europe, you know? Uh, and, and people are interested to learn ideas from UK and Europe. What, what are the, some of the special courses that you have there that is not available in Asia? Do you, can you name a couple? Well, I mean, we, obviously we offer our course, ACS offer the courses throughout the world, mm. so you can study from anywhere. Um, ah. Yeah, so, so that I wouldn't, well, we're pretty global really, so I wouldn't say there's anywhere really you can't study our courses. <laughs> I don't know. So. <laughs> Ah, okay. Very good. Yeah. <clears throat> so those uh, viewers or listeners out there, please go into IARC's website and choose your and course. ACS. They don't have they don't have five, they don't have twenty. How many courses you have again? Six hundred. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
you know, we have yeah. our customers from some certain banks, insurance companies. When we blessed out those, those people, they came in and they were so shocked to know that you have 600 courses because it's so hard to develop a program. Yeah. Well, yeah. congratulations to IARC <laughs> for what a wonderful job. Yeah. yeah. All right. Irene, yes. yeah. So, yes. Uh, so, Tracy, I just wanted to reiterate your point that it's really good that when you decide when you want to study, uh, what I really want to encourage the learners out there who's watching that e maybe even schedule it in a calendar. So, you know, what gets scheduled gets done. So, if you really decide that if you want to study at 6 a.m. in the morning, for example, put it in the calendar and then you'll yeah. honor yourself and do it, right? Exactly, yeah. 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 yeah, I think it's important. It is important to find the time to do it as well. Yeah, and you're right that if you plan something, you're more likely to do it. Um, I, I did read something the other day about um, doing boring things that we should actually plan a time in our life to do the boring things once a week, like the admin or writing letters and all those things. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. saying learning is boring because it's obviously not. So why not planning things like learning? So, you know, so you plan your hour for your boring thing, then you plan an hour for your learning and an hour to do your housework and, and plan your life and try to actually stick to those, really. Yes. And that, yes. that's the way yeah. to achieve anything, I think. Yeah. yeah. And what about um, micro goals? If we achieve our micro goals, do you think it's important I, I to celebrate very, that? Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think micro goals are important. If you, if I think, say a lot of my creative writing students, they want to write a novel. Well, that sounds very nice, but to write a novel is a massive goal. So why yeah, not give yeah. yourself a writing a paragraph a day or a page a day or studying two pages of your course a day or yeah. study for an hour a week? How right. do you break your goals down into small pieces? And that's easier to achieve. Yeah. You know, I, think, I, 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 really, I really like what you said. So when a lot of people, they don't become successful in online learning because they don't manage their time. Mm -hmm. Would you believe me? I have nine clocks in my house. Nine <laughs> clocks. And why? Because I'm so concerned about my time. Yeah. I'm also very concerned about my fitness. So I have four weighing machines. <laughs> four. So it shows that if you have four weighing machines and nine clocks, then you can get things done for whatever yeah. you want to do. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we've gone through um, pre-learning and pre-training and during the training. Now, post-training. So, after going through, uh, you know, two or three days of training, how do we leave them wanting more? Wanting more? Oh, that's mm -hmm. very easy. Always tell them what is going to happen the next lesson. Many students are looking forward. And the lecturer said, oh, it's time's up. And, you know, when the bell ring, ring, okay, say you the next class. Don't. Just say something. The next class, we're going to learn about a very amazing chapter on biology, right? How it affects your health. Example, you know. Or what should you do when you are studying, you know, uh, psychology? How are we going to have a mini case study on how to help people reduce the stress in work life so that they are excited to catch the idea. Many people, they don't do this. They don't let people catch the idea, you know, catch the idea. <laughs> so they just sit down, oh, end of class, then they just off and they go about doing something else not related to the next class. So one way is to explain what's the next uh, topic, how exciting it is. Second is to give some exciting, uh, what we call assignments that engages with people. Don't allow the learners or participants to do it on their own. Don't. You got to learn how to do it. Find somebody in your groups, find somebody on the online, pair up with them and discuss. Why? Because there's input learning and output learning. Right, mm -hmm. and when they're discussing, they'll remember <laughs> the fish. I remember the fish. Oh, I remember this. Oh, the professor was so cute. He talked about the left and the right brain. Oh, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to do more research into it. So it's a trigger. 
Otherwise, it's just words, 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 words. You know. Yeah, yeah it's true. I, I like that idea having a a buddy, you know, or a peer yes. buddy to to kind of have a little pace with you as well. And uh, from 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 your side, Tracy, like sometimes it's one on one, right, with learners. Yeah. yeah. So do they have a chance to yeah. have a buddy with them to study? Uh, no, not in the same way, but just going on from what Dr. Lawrence was saying, I think it is important that as you're working, when somebody comes to the end of the course, to actually make them think why they've done that course and where they want to go. So this goes back to getting to know them, knowing that they're a human being, knowing that you're a human being, because then you can advise them and think, well, perhaps you need to move forward and you know you need to look at another counselling course or you need to move on into this area because you know about them. So you can actually encourage them and continue with their learning um, I think it's important, you know, we're all lifelong learners now, really, hopefully, and I think yeah. that is important to keep on. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So do you see there's the learning? Oh. Huh. Yes. I mean, there's a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jade is asking, is long-term planning important? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to answer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 Tracy. Yeah, I mean, going back, what do you want to achieve? What, do I want to become what by the end of in five years time in 10 years time so i think that's important it has to be achievable and it has to be realistic so if i do this course now for six months what am i going to do after why am i doing it where am i going with this so i think it is always important to plan for the long term and i know plans change and life changes but if yeah. you have a plan that you're moving towards i think that's essential really yes yeah i think yeah. too many students they're going to an online program without a goal if you don't have goals, it's like taking a ball and you're throwing here, you're throwing there, you waste your time, you waste your energy. But you have a long-term long term planning that this course that I'm going to take from IARC is going to help me financially, is going to help me in my status, is going to help me get a promotion, is going to help me change my life. Whew, I, got, I know what to do with this ball now. This ball is my time. This ball is my energy. You know, so that's why we need that long term. Great, yeah, great idea. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes. So do you guys foresee the learning and training? How do you guys foresee the learning and training trend coming up in the next six months? Do you think it's still going to be online? Yeah. Do you want me to? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tracy, you wanna go? yeah. I mean, from the UK perspective, obviously, we've had schools closed down, universities closed, yes. colleges closed down because of COVID. It's, it, it's all been quite difficult. And I think in the past, distance learning has been seen over here as a bit of a second class citizen, really. Um, yeah. Suddenly, all these universities, colleges, schools are having to panic and develop distance learning courses than offer things online, which they haven't had to do before. So they're all panicking, whereas we've obviously been doing it for years. We know what we're doing. We've got the experience. So, you know, yes, yes. I think it's a trend that will definitely carry on, hopefully yes. for us. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's I, true. I, I see a new trend that's coming up that people, <clears throat> they want to learn at my time. I want to yeah. learn when I'm free. Yeah. I don't have to schedule a nine o'clock or 11 o'clock because I've got babies and mother-in-law to take care of. <laughs> so when I'm free, I want to switch on a video and learn. You know, example for, for us, we have an SOC program, a super online learning program where people can just watch it and go on a recorded version and learn. Wow. If you go to my uh, Instagram, you can learn something every day. Every day, I'm sharing a tip about sales, about leadership, about mindset, about how to improve yourself. So mm -hmm. every day, if you go to this uh, uh, Instagram um, uh, you know, a uh, page of mine. Mm, yes. Who understand that your mind is so wonderful. All it needs is knowledge. Whether you're doing a short-term course, a medium-term course, or a long-term course, get involved with knowledge. Yeah, and it's true. I think as a learner or as a participant, we want to know that trainer and tutor as a person. So going to their social media, knowing them as a yes. person, that would kind of encourage them to have this kind of long-term mentor-mentee relationship as well. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Dr. Brendan made a good point, you know, the online learning is not easy for older teachers. So I have to ask you this, Dr. Lawrence, how did yes. you transition from a face-to-face -face <laughs> training to online training? I like the question. The question is older teachers, 
for all the people involved here, 825 people watching. I am 64 years old. So I've considered myself in that category. If you are above 60 years old, you're considered old. So I am older than 60. Well, the reason why I transcended into online or I started using uh, technology is because I'm very concerned and responsible for the learning experience of my participant. Mm. If I see a partic if I see a student like this, you know, I get very upset. Hey, how can I change? How can I make him want to learn? You know, and if I can make him smile and laugh and clap hands and hey, I want to come back for the next class. I want to sign up for more classes. Wow, I know. I will be here for a long time. I will leave a legacy. I will leave a timeless, you know, uh, idea. And people will remember because that's what we want. We want people to remember the knowledge. If you cannot remember, you cannot practice it. Then your mm -hmm. online learning, your courses will become just an academic paper, right? So yes. that's my take on it. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Tracy, for those uh, future members who's watching this or, um, you know, uh, members who have not joined us. So tell us more, a little bit more about IRC and why should they even join us? Um, basically, I mean, I did briefly say this earlier, but basically we established quite a few years ago, 1999 now. So that's 21 years ago. Um, yes. The aim was to help people as we were transitioning towards distance learning and online learning. So we've got so many members who've got a wealth of experience and knowledge in doing distance learning and doing face to face learning. And I think for anybody who wants to join, it's a really usable organisation to benefit from everybody's experience, really. Yeah. And obviously they get to attend seminars like this as well, which is useful. So I think <laughs> yeah. it's very good. For <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. On top of that, I also want to add that IRC is actually a quality control system for education programs and courses in international education, which means that if you are a member with IRC, your course content are now certified as international standards. So if you're really interested in joining us in IRC, do connect to us uh, at our website below. So yes. to conclude, uh, Dr. Lawrence, do you have any um, yes. few more tips I, for us? Yes, I want the participant add? to type out one idea that you got from this presentation. I gave you five. And uh, Indiana Jones, sorry, Tracy Jones <laughs> <laughs> gave you about four, you know. Can you guys type out at least one idea what you have learned so far? Because we got some books to give away. We got some oh, yes. uh, online courses to give away, you know. So everybody, now type, 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 type. Something that you learn, something that you learn. Type one idea. Good. I see one point saying, use your brain to learn. Exactly. Yes. But you must know how your brain works. It's not left brain. It's not logical. It's also the creative part of the brain. Creative learning, you know? Good. Yes. Uh, yeah, Fei Fei, you're right. Oh. NLP. Yes. yes. Neuro linguistic programming. We don't teach. We don't instruct. We program the information into your mind so that when you go back to the real world, the application of this knowledge will help you in your career. Wonderful. Yes. I like that. NLP. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Farah, and you mentioned having buddy to pace with me and motivate yes. them to learn. Yes, fantastic. I like that. And Shafiq yes. as well, using both parts of the brain. Definitely both the left and the right brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. And yeah, Dr. That's Brandon, one more idea. Yes, some more. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Dr. Brendan mentioned about having an enthusiastic teacher and learner. That's very essential. Yes. That's really good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Jenny, home hook and aim at big fish. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you remember my fish. See, I told you, you remember, you were remembering. Imagine this fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> finding connection with people. That's right. Thank you so much, Jade, for joining us today. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to add, Tracy? Um, we're just going off from Brendan and Jane's, uh, Jay's point, really. I think it's essential to develop those relationships with our learners. They need, to, like I said before, they need to know we're human beings and they're human beings yeah. and they're going to treat them like that. And I think that's the essential part of any learning, really. <laughs> yes. Mm. And my, my final point my final point is when learners or participants 
get into a course, their battery level is like this, very small. You know, as a lecturer, you got to have a big battery. <laughs> you got to energize them, you know. If you don't energize them, how are they going to learn? So I like what Dr. Brandon said. We have to have an enthusiasm. We got to have a big energizer battery. This is the participant. And hopefully after that, what happened? The learner, the participants will become this kind of battery. And go out, he will go out there and energize the world and make his mark in this century. <laughs> yeah. I think to conclude, I also think that the motivation to learn any form of learning or training should be intrinsic. It should come within us rather than extrinsic. You know, like what Tracy said, we must always remember the reason why uh, we started yes. this learning journey in the first place and have that you know, uh, at the back of our mind, at our phones, in the fridge, whatever that works for you. And then that will motivate yourself to continue to do it. Yes. Yeah. Good, so good. thank you so much, Dr. Lawrence and also Tracy Jones for joining us today. I really appreciate all your time. And to all our viewers out there, thank you so much. If you are keen, uh, for future members who's keen to join us at IRC, do check us out at our website below. Thank yes. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Don't forget you. to watch Indiana Jones movie because you, <laughs> <laughs> you have somebody from his clan over there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Tracy. You. Thank you. Bye. Come on. Yes. Bye. Are we offline?